Good evening, everybody. It's so good to see you tonight on this Thursday evening. We are officially at night 12 of our Bloom Everywhere Virtual Transformation Conference. Again, I am Lola Moore Johnston. I am your host and founder of this movement where we are helping people to unearth their buried potential. You may hear behind me that there is a storm brewing. So if any at any point you just see me disappear, I was not raptured. <laughs> We are believing God for a miracle tonight as we are assisting one another in becoming all that God has created us to be. And I believe that tonight is going to be one like no other. Oh, man, I just love hearing your testimonials and sharing how God has been merciful to you through this movement. And we just look forward to what God is going to continue to do in and through you. If perhaps this is your first time joining us or you've just been obstinate throughout, we do want to invite you again to download the free companion workbook to the Bloom Everywhere conference. You can find it at tinyurl.com forward slash bloom everywhere. And using that booklet, it'll help you to be able to journal through what you hear um, through the presentations. I want to encourage you to go back through the presentations that you've heard from night to night. And as you go back through, perhaps God is saying something or revisiting something for you. We want to make sure that you get everything that is designed for you to hear on tonight. Again, I believe that it is my purpose in life to help as many people as possible to unearth their very potential. And I would just love to be able to partner with you in it. On last evening, I shared with you that we are starting a program that will help you do that after this conference. It is called the Bloom Everywhere 14 Day Purpose project. And having shared that vision, we have been blessed to have donors to share um, so that we can offer scholarships to the program. Isn't that great? And so for a limited amount of people, we have the opportunity to give you a scholarship for that program. Um, let me just share with you the flyer for that. You'll see everywhere, uh, everyone, it is two weeks of preparation and positioning for purpose beginning June the 14th through the 27th. Um, it includes a half day purpose camp, uh, developing your personal purpose plan, exclusive Facebook group and purpose project workbook. We'll begin again at uh, on June the 14th and end on the 27th. If you just want to jump in and um, start your journey now, you can go to bloomwithlola.com. But if you're interested in one of those scholarships, let me tell you what to do and we'll talk about it again at the end. I need you, number one, to inbox me and tell me you're interested in a scholarship. And then I'd like you to go to the Bloom Movement page and go live sharing what your experience has been during the Bloom Everywhere conference. Again, you're going to go inbox me, let me know you're interested in a scholarship, and then go live on the Bloom Movement page to share what your experience has been in the conference. Now, I know that some of you don't have Facebook. I know that there are some situations where you might not be able to go live, um, but because the scholarships are limited, we are also limiting the criteria to help us not to have to be too selective. So, we're going to allow the circumstance to be selective for us. You need to be able to go on Facebook, inbox me, let me know you're interested in the scholarship, and then go live on the Bloom Movement page and let us know what your experience was. And we hope that you'll be a part of that. We are so thrilled and honored again that God has allowed us to be able to talk to people from all around the world. And I want to give you an opportunity to share where you're watching from. I see somebody watching from New Jersey. I see Nassau, Bahamas, another person from Nassau. Um, let us know where you are watching from. I think I see Michigan in here. I know we got Memphis in here. Uh, let us know who else it is that is watching. We certainly want to know where you're watching from. Tonight, we have a special treat because our co-host is joining us from the motherland. She is coming from the continent, all the way from the country of Kenya. We want to invite Ms. Jean Magusu, excuse me, Dr. Jean Magusu to the Bloom Movement page. How are you doing, Dr. Jean? 
How you doing, Lo Pastor Lola? How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great, thank you. And I know that it is super early in the morning there. Thank you so much for joining us at Bloom Everywhere. Yes, yes, I am. I am honored to be part of something that is now a global movement. Okay. Yes, it is. So yes, we, it is. we thank God glory. for His. Amen. We thank God for His blessing. Yes. This early morning. I, this early morning. <laughs> oh man, they said the yes. early bird gets the worm, so you're gonna get two this morning. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll get the bird and the worm. Oh, yes. Come on. Let's claim it in the name of Jesus. Here we go. <laughs> so that being said, Dr. Mogusu, would you please tell us who you are? Share with the ladies what the Lord is doing through you. Well, where do I start? I am many things to many people. I am pastor, lecturer, or professor, if you will. Um, I am a woman of God. I love God with all of my heart. And it is my heart's desire to ensure that everybody that I meet understands what it means to fall in love with Jesus. Because uh, you can know about him, but until you really fall, fall in love with him, you really don't know about him. That's so right. He's, 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 his love is that kind of love. Mm -hmm. You can't help but fall in love with him. Amen. And so... Um, I graduate, I, let's see, I have a master's in public policy and administration and a PhD from, um, uh, Jackson State, Mississippi. So, <laughs> um, and when I finished that, I went to seminary, I was minding my own business, <laughs> doing my own thing, chatting my way through life. And then God called me into ministry and, uh, basically turned my life right side up. And um, and went to went to the seminary, uh, finished from the seminary, um, wanted desperately to come back and minister to my people, and uh, you know, so I'm doing that. I have been lecturing at one of the local universities for the last few years, and now uh, God is saying He wants me back in the battlefield. So. We are working on transitioning back into that battlefield. Um, yes, and I am just excited to be here with you. Yes, it is wonderful to hear someone made a comment that your face glows when you talk about the Lord. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> Oh, I tell you, I, he's, he's a wonder. I tell you that. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, we're yeah. so grateful to have you and those who are wanting to connect with Dr. Mogusu. You can go to her G, her YouTube channel at Jean Mogusu or connect with her on IG. According to Jean is her handle. Well, Doc, you're going to tell us about our speaker for tonight. Yes, our speaker for tonight is... Eileen Harris, um, she is an award-winning success coach who trains top influencers and lady bosses how to have it all by growing an online business. She is a Forbes.com contributor. She has lovingly trained over 100,000 entrepreneurs. She has customers in 20 plus countries and has also launched successful businesses in the Latino market. She lives with her husband and her dog, Bentley, in Miami Beach. She has a bachelor's in Spanish studies and a bachelor of science in psychology from Andrews and an MBA from Southern Adventist University. Currently, Eileen is the chief strategy officer and co-founder of Emrys International. And her daily motto is to play to slay and conquer the day i will she is um going to be we are going to have the award winning grammy nominated dove award winning group as our musical guest virtue and they will uh minister to us in music and then after that our next voice that you will hear will be Eileen Harris. And I am telling y'all, you are in for a treat. Buckle up, boss ladies. The original boss lady is, is in town, is in the house, I should say. <laughs>
Good evening, everyone. Wasn't that a powerful song? It's got me super excited about our awesome message tonight. So let's just start off with a quick word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your endless abundance of blessings. Thank you for gracing us with your presence here tonight. May it be you who speaks through me. And please listen and answer all the prayer requests of everyone watching. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So guys, I am so happy to be here at this phenomenal event. The speakers have just blown my mind, blessed me from head to toe. It has been a phenomenal experience and I am just so humbled that I get to be here with you guys today to share with you the four C's of turning pain into purpose. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you turn off any distractions, okay, because we're all pretty busy working in our lives. Today is an opportunity to work on your life, to work on your spiritual path. So grab a pen and paper, grab your phone. If you've got to take notes, do what you got to do. But trust me, a short pencil is better than a short memory. And this is a type of information that when applied can help you experience a transformation. Why? Because when you take action, that's when you start seeing that traction in your life. And trust me, one of my favorite parts of taking action and seeing changes in my life is that it's a double blessing. Have you ever heard of a double double blessing. Let me know in the chat if you have. To me, a double blessing is when something really blesses me, but because it blessed me, because I could lead by example, that you can grow through what you go through, that God showed up for me, that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. It then blesses someone else. It encourages someone else. It shows someone else what's possible. And so whatever you're going through tonight, I promise you that it is for the purpose of a double blessing. And so I hope that You've got your pen and paper ready because we're going to talk about those four C's to turn pain into purpose. I don't know about you, but right now there's just so many reasons to be in pain. If, if you don't know, then we're probably living under a rock, which I doubt it. But there's just so many people hurting around the world, whether it's a pandemic, whether it's just so much injustice around the world that is completely incomprehensible. You know, people having financial troubles, people engaging in spiritual battles. There is so much going on in the world that we have to be prepared to turn that pain into purpose. Because any time that you turn pain into purpose, not only can you experience that blessing, but then of course you experience that double blessing. And I'm not telling you this because I read it in the book. I'm not telling you this because I heard it somewhere. I'm telling you this because I have lived through it. Being the daughter of Cuban immigrants, I was raised to know better than to take things for granted. I was raised to just be thankful even for the home address, you know, for my freedoms and just for so many different things. But, you know, after some time, I don't know if anyone can relate to parents telling you, you know, what happened to them. It, it sort of becomes your normal until something hits you strong, until something truly impacts how you see the world. And for me, it was in 2011, all right? It was my wedding, all right? So I am happily married to my awesome husband, Matthew Harris. But let me tell you, let me get real about the real that you see on social media, you know? Because on social media, you see what we show you. But there are some awesome things behind the scenes that led us to massive growth. And for us, it was the massive recession that was happening in that area. Do you guys remember that housing crisis, 2008, 2010, still saw it in 2011. And at that time, my husband proposed to me and then I was out of a job. The company he was working for got hit by the recession. He was out of a job. We were unemployed, no money. I had no internet in my house. I, you know, just hustled to figure something out. But I said to myself, I serve a mighty God and a God that when you pray to him, he can bend space and time. You do not tell God that your prayers are going to take years to be answered. You do not limit God like that. And so 
I'm telling you what I did, all right? I'm not suggesting you do any of this, but I got my last little bit of money with all of my faith and I bought wedding invitations and I sent them out. And you know what? I had not reserved the place to get married in. I didn't have a caterer. I didn't have a baker, didn't have a dress or a photographer. And I mailed them out. And you know what was on that wedding invitation? There was an address. There was a time. There was a date. There was a dress code. Okay. And that was it. And then I put my head down and got to work. And the wedding was just a few months away. Bridesmaids were ordering their dress before the bride got her dress. And we got to work. I remember I grabbed all my extra textbooks that I had and I traded them on amazon.com for store credit. And I was getting things on Amazon that I needed, like whether it was food or paper towel or saran wrap. I, then I got business books. And you know, at the time my husband was my fiance, he's hustling and we're working so hard and we started a business. All right. We started a business and the first month you're thinking, oh, it's going okay. And in hindsight, people ask me, well, why didn't you just ask for money? Why didn't you just, um, ask your family. And honestly, guys, I come from very humble beginnings. I, I can't just call people and be like, throw me a wedding with a few months notice. It's, it just wasn't my reality. And then the second part of it was I was so busy venting to God to turn my pain into purpose. I didn't have time to vent on social media. I was so busy connected to my source to my Lord that I didn't have time to drive my friends crazy, whining and complaining. So I can't tell you that I was trying to keep it a secret. I honestly didn't even think to go tell people what was going on because I was just so busy taking action because I have this belief in me based on my experiences that through prayer, we can ask for things, but it is through action that we can actually receive the answers to our prayers. I had to take action so that God could actually work through my life. And long story short, I'll skip ahead to all the stressful times where I was growing my business at Starbucks, at Panera Bread, because I didn't have internet access in my home. And fast forward in just 90 days, that business was churning $13,000 a month. And to some people, the big deal is the amount. But to me, the big deal was the freedom, the freedom that I could always make decisions based on what was in my heart, based on what I was called to do, not what my bank account said I was allowed to do. Because honestly, guys, your bank account is a reflection of the past, not what God is going to do for you in the future. And it was so freeing for us to have our wedding. Let me tell you, my side of the family doesn't speak English. Matthew's side of the family, most of them don't speak Spanish. So we just think my side thought his side paid for the wedding and his side of the family thought my family paid for the wedding. I, I don't know what people were saying, but we celebrated with our friends and family at the location that, thank God, he reserved that date for me even without a deposit, all right? Thank goodness we had our photographer. We had all these other things, but the truth is we had our testimony. We knew that we can set our sights on something and we could pray and we could turn that painful experience that truly could have derailed us. If I would have put all my energy into, oh my goodness, but I'm unemployed. What if this happens? What if that goes wrong? Instead, I just believed so much that it was absolutely real. And that was in 2011. And so many other experiences have come. And you just think to yourself, why me? Why is this happening now? Have you ever felt that way? Let me know in the chat if you've ever felt that way. Just throw an emoji. You don't got to put all your business out there. But, you know, life happens and you think, what now? Again, I, I don't deserve this. And here's the truth. These things happen and they're happening for us, not to us. The enemy will try and tell you it's happening to you. But if you pay close attention and you're going to apply everything you learn in the Bible, guess what you're going to see? It's happening for you because of that double blessing I was talking about. And so as I've gone through so many things, guys, let me tell you, you, you don't grow international businesses without just turning up your faith all the way up. 
having a business is probably the most religious experience <laughs> I've ever had. There is just so many opportunities for faith and to show that you believe and to keep showing up when there is absolutely no physical evidence before you. And so uh, through all those experiences, I have always noticed that these four C's play a consistent role. So you're going to want to make sure that you keep an eye for them in your own experience. You want to keep an eye for it as you minister, as people come to you for help, because what ends up happening sometimes is, is that a lot of leaders have something called unconscious competence, meaning you're just awesome at something and you're so natural at it. You think it's common sense. So unconscious competence, you guys can Google that later, really dive deep into it. You know, I love psychology and all of that. So I won't dive in deeper, but the idea is, is it's natural to you to lead from the front. And so for me, I didn't have that much unconscious competence. And so I had to truly figure out and deconstruct what could work so that no matter what came my way, I had the blueprint for success that could match my faith, right? Because you believe in food and you believe you can cook, but I promise you, no matter what your faith is, you're gonna want that recipe when you're in the kitchen, right? So what I'm sharing with you is my recipe and you can tweak it, you can add your own little flavor and seasoning to it, but this is what's worked for this Cuban girl and I know that it could truly help you. So remember, this doesn't work in theory, this works when you apply it. So the very first C is community. Community, all right? You have got to, to get strong people around you. One of the biggest mistakes I've done in the past is isolating myself. Having friends pray for me, having people know what's going on in my life, having a safe place to go, okay? Now, let me tell you, opinions are a dime a dozen. And I, I don't know if you've heard this before. I hear it all the time. Like, they don't pay my bills, so I shouldn't listen to them. Mm, be careful with that too, because there's a lot of women trapped in abusive situations because somebody's paying their bills, all right? Whether they pay your bills or not, you should listen to them if they have the results you want, if your gut feels right about it, if God put them in your path. But honestly, at the end of the day, you've got to trust that you can listen to what God is telling you. But with that said, community. Don't expect perfection, okay? Plug yourself into something like this. Look at this fabulous Bloom conference. You want community? Don't sit there and wait for everyone to come over to your house. We have got Zoom. We have got WhatsApp. We have got Facebook Messenger. You have got a fabulous YouTube channel where you can watch these videos over and over and over again and be blessed, not because the video changed, but because you changed. And when you watch it over and over again, something new is going to impact you at a new level. So you're always going to want to make sure that you've got community whether it's online, in person, it's a group chat. Don't take it for granted because those people are in your life for a reason. And let's be real. Some people are in your life for a season. Do not force it. If that's just somebody you have cool memories with, do not wait for someone to grow. All right. Your calling may not be their calling. All right. Maybe they said enough is enough with the music lessons. Don't hold back your gift because that friend doesn't go with you anymore. So you have got to truly surround yourself with that army that has your back, okay? Second C. So the first one is community. The second is capacity. You have got to have the capacity to handle what life throws at you. This is extremely important. Let me tell you. As I grow my business in over 20 countries, oof, the haters that have come my way, my goodness, I feel honored sometimes like, wow, y'all took the time to say these kinds of things to me, my goodness. But in the beginning, I didn't feel so honored. In fact, I had one girl who she is a keyboard warrior. She had some dark things to say about me to me. You know, it, she was a hot, hot mess and it could really rock my confidence. You know, I had to pray through a lot of that. But as it kept coming to me, I kept increasing my ability to handle it. Well, guess what? One day I was at a seminar and this was in San Diego, California. There were at least... 6,000 people at that seminar. This was not a small little gathering, okay? This is a big old seminar. And I, I don't know why the women's bathroom line is always just way too long, right? It is 
intense. And I said to myself, I'm going to go two floors down and use another women's restroom in this huge convention center. Well, there are a bunch of other women who had the same idea, still aligned, but nowhere near the line I avoided upstairs. While I'm standing in line, this girl walks past me and I recognize her and I wave. Guys, I, I am not that cool girl. I if I didn't wave at you, I probably just didn't see you or I was lost in thought. If I see you and I recognize you, I'm going to wave. Well, when I noticed who the heck I was waving at, it was my hater. My hater, who spends so much time trashing me on the Internet, was at a seminar on personal development. So, hey, good for her. I'm glad she wanted to grow. But when that girl saw me wave and I realized who it was, she ran for her life. Let me tell you, she has a future in the Olympics. I've never seen somebody run so fast at a friendly, okay? And for me, I'll never forget that. That was such a blessing because any other hater that has come my way, whether it is typed in a voice note through the rumor mill, whatever comes my way, I just imagine somebody running away when you actually wave saying, what's up? And so you have got to have the capacity so that when something comes at you, it doesn't unravel you. All right. I was actually speaking at an event in the Dominican Republic and oh my goodness, the most alien like bug came near me. Let me tell you, this bug was not from planet Earth. I had never seen anything like it. I was freaking out. I asked my friend who had invited me to speak. It was his event. And let me tell you guys, he had a massive capacity. He just flicked the bug and boom, it was out of my life. And you know why? Because I was around the right community. I had the right support system that helped me. And obviously these are, you know, lighthearted examples but if you increase your capacity, people are going to have a lot harder time getting at you. It doesn't mean I'm a robot, guys. I will laugh. I will cry. Life happens. But increase your capacity so that God can truly flex his muscles through you. Increase your capacity because you're actually going to need some muscle to handle blessings. If $10 million dollars we're putting your bank account right now. Do you have the capacity to know how to invest it, to know what programs you want to donate to, to know how to make it last? Are you increasing your capacity so that you can handle what God has sent your way? This was a big deal for me when I was single. I had to increase my capacity to take care of myself and be happy all by myself on my own before I could also be happy with someone else. But that's a whole other day and a whole other subject. I won't derail. But let me tell you, you increase your capacity and you are fully equipped to, to turn that pain into purpose. The third C is contribution. Oh my goodness, I just remember praying and praying and praying for stuff and it just became so much easier to see my prayers answered and come to life when I was also adding value to others. And so for me, contribution has looked a certain way. Contribution can look a number of ways. So for me, contribution has been working, volunteering, sharing content online, checking in on people, taking my grandmother to the grocery store. There's so many different ways. You'll hear it in other places. People talk about good juju, karma. I don't know. You'll hear it in so many different ways. But the fact is, is that when we get over ourselves a little bit and we actually contribute to the world. We just keep using our gifts. We don't wait for everything to be perfect. Oh, I would go to church. I would participate in that program. I would go on that mission trip. I would show up for this and that, but look what I have going on. Let me tell you, I have contributed and I have slapped on a smile for that moment, not to be fake, not to fake it till you make it, but because that's what I needed in that moment, not to make it about me. And because of those contributions, I can't tell you how many blessings have come my way that I could have never planned. You couldn't have planned it. You couldn't have scripted it any better. And so what I'm trying to tell you is contribute. How are you helping other people? How are you supporting others? You know, how are you showing up? That servant leadership will be personified in your contribution. And let me tell you, when you have been hit hard, you are in pain. Your hands are soaking wet because you are just leaning forward into your hands and all you fear are tears. 
and you still find the strength to go out there, let me tell you, you are adding value to your community. You are increasing your capacity to handle more and your contribution will always come back to you tenfold. The next is going to be communication. Oof, this one's hard to talk about. I'm gonna try not to get emotional about this one. But one of my biggest regrets is not dreaming bigger sooner. Whew, that was hard for me uh, to realize as a Christian, as an entrepreneur, as a wife, as a daughter, as a sister, as a friend. Not dreaming bigger sooner really hit me hard. And uh, communication was key in that. Have you been communicating to God exactly what you want? Have you been praying? Have you been researching it? Or are you just like vaguely wishing and wanting? Are you searching? Like, guys, the other day, not the other day, maybe a couple months ago, my husband walked up to me with sadness in his face. I thought somebody had died. Seriously. I got scared because I lost my dad this past Thanksgiving to lung cancer. It was awful. So when I saw my husband's face like that, I was like, Oh no, I, I just can't, I, I do not have it in me to deal with something else. And it was that my dream house. All right. Cause I, I'm very clear on my vision. I know the address of my dream house. Okay. It's not some vague, Ooh, this would be nice. I know the address. And he was letting me know a celebrity bought my dream house. And I was like, well, that's okay. It can be a blessing for this person now and they can take care of it for me one day. But I was so specific in communicating why I'm doing something or where I'm going. And as I got more specific, God also got super specific with answering my prayers. And uh, then I started dreaming bigger and, and I started thinking bigger. And uh, let me tell you, if you do not ask for more, do not get mad and start talking about where was God when all this happened or, you know, why not me? And let me tell you, speak up and speak it proud. And when you do so, don't do it as a gimmick or a trick. Have faith in the process. And when you faith it till you make it, you can always turn your pain into purpose. So let's review those four real quick because individually, game changers for me. But when I started to realize that combined, my goodness, problems became things on my to-do list because life happens. So these things that are crippling you can just become little hiccups, like a flat tire. And this is where community, capacity, contribution, and communication kick in. Because after you implement these four C's, there's one thing that you have got to really stay on cue for, and that's gratitude. If you have an attitude of gratitude, I am thankful this is happening for me. Look, I'm not thankful for my problems. I'm thankful in them. Did you catch that? I'm going to say it again for the people in the back, all right? I'm not thankful for my problems. I'm thankful in them, which increases my capacity and my ability to handle them. All right. So this is super important for you to think about for your own walk, right? For your own situation that you're going through right now, you've got to have an attitude of gratitude. And you know what thankful people do? Thankful people take action. So here is actually some really inspiring things that I have in my journal, in my gratitude journal. I have it in my day planner. I've got a digital calendar, guys, but honestly, I am an addict to crossing things off. Let me know if you love those checklists too. And I remind myself of these things throughout. So you'll wanna write these down because you'll wanna revisit this. This can be a lot to unpack, all right? For me, discovering it was a lot. I can't imagine just, boom, getting it all in one night because every situation is different. So you wanna be ready to handle that. All right. So here are some really cool things that help me turn pain into purpose. One, your biggest strengths come from your biggest struggles. It was because there was absolutely zero money in my account. It was because after in one night applying for 300 jobs, I was not being picky guys. I applied for 300 jobs because of that struggle. I am now pretty confident that I can grow my business, that I can be a business owner, that I can do what I do because 
I have built that muscle, right? And so your biggest strengths come from your biggest struggles. There must have been something that helped you flex your prayer muscle. There must have been a situation that really told you, I've got to eat differently. I've got to exercise regularly, all right? And that really transformed your situation. So I actually have a post-it in my computer, not in, on. And it says, who do I have to be in this situation? Who do I have to be? So think about who you have to be in that moment, in that pain, so that you can get through it. And that is your blueprint to success right there. The next thing that really reminds me not to be so hard on myself and to grant myself some grace is that broken pieces end up creating a beautiful mosaic. Broken pieces can actually turn into something amazing. You don't have to leave the glass lying around cutting you, messy, looking like rubble. You can grab it and truly have a beautiful beautiful mosaic that inspires others, that glorifies God, that inspires you every single day. People say, girl, how do you stay so motivated? I don't know because I don't. I don't stay motivated, but I am disciplined about my faith. Do you see the difference? It doesn't matter how I feel because I am certain in who I am praying to and who has my back and how God is taking care of things before I even know to ask for them. So you have got to have that mindset of a mosaic like, oh, there's a little chip here. There's a little broken piece there. And then truly allow yourself to experience what's going to come through it. Um, one of the last few things that really, really helps me is turning your wounds into wisdom. Don't let things happen in vain, guys. Learn through what you go through. And if you got a little extra energy, glow through what you go through. Because if you've got that attitude of gratitude, you're going to keep glowing. You're going to show people, you know what? Yeah, she got hit hard. Yup, life knocked her out. But she got right back up. Because let me tell you, I have given in many times and I have pivoted. Like, hey, maybe this job situation wasn't going to be right for me. And I pivoted. I gave in. But I never gave up. So you can definitely be flexible in your approach. Don't put God in a little box. You know, he created the box. Let him draw outside the lines. Right. And so it's super important for you to know that. I know for myself, just in during Rona, I've started gardening. And let me tell you, I am a city girl. I can, and my dad, you know, he was a fisherman. So I grew up with the ocean and fishing and all sorts of things. But I didn't know anything about gardening and you know, I went to the University of YouTube and Pinterest and many failed attempts later. Goodness, there's some tomatoes growing. And guys, none of the seeds I bought worked. I literally sliced a tomato and planted it because I was so dead serious that something was going to come out of that dirt. And now it's growing. And I know that's a silly example, but it helps. And then finally, you've got to remember this verse. Let me know in the chat if you can finish this verse. If you know what it says, I can do all things through. I want you to type it out and, and you'll see why it's not for me. It's not a memory jogger. It's for you. You want to type it out in the comments. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthen me. You want to type it out. Trust me. It's going to be really powerful. So you want to make sure that you write, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthen me. And I'm sure we've all heard that Bible verse before. I hope you've heard it before. And it's, it's so incredibly powerful. And I, and I've always heard it about goodness. God can do so much through you and Christ has your back and God is all knowing and all powerful and omnipresent and so many beautiful things. But you know what stood out to me recently? The beginning of it. I can do all things. That was like a boom game changer for me. Like, wait, what? I can do all things. So when you feel weak, when you feel down, you feel dehydrated, you feel broke, you feel exhausted, you feel like you can't anymore, you feel like, why me again? It just keeps coming at you. You're like, wow, when it rains, it pours, when it is truly coming down on you. Do not sit there, okay, and wait for other people to micromanage your blessing. 
you might have to be the one that's the light at the end of the tunnel for the people around you, all right? Don't sit there and wait for it to be okay, to be positive. Don't sit there and be okay until someone else gives you permission. Don't wait until your family tells you, oh yeah, that business is gonna work. Unless they're your ideal customer, honestly, how do they know they mean well, but they just don't know. Don't wait until the man on TV tells you the economy is okay enough. Do not wait until that teacher finally gives you that praise for you to think you're going to crush it in your career. Do not wait for that compliment for your significant other. Do not wait, you know, for you to no longer be single, to have that self-worth. You do not wait because the verse says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthened me. I can. And it's not you alone. So even though this is something that is happening to you, and you are doing this for yourself, that verse reminds us that you're not doing it by yourself. And that is super, super empowering. So all I ask you for tonight is to do one thing, all right? I'm gonna give you guys some homework, so please write this down. You want to have this homework here available for you. This is something that I do every single day. I want you every single day this month, and I hope because you do it all month that it carries on for the rest of your life, because I do this every day no matter what, But for now, let's just push for the, this whole month. Every single day, I want you to write at least five things every day that you're thankful for. Because the more you're thankful for, right? Actually, every single day, I write at least two to 300 things I'm thankful for. And I promise you, maybe only 10% are available in stores. That's how much this practice has helped me and given me perspective. I'm only asking you to do five. I do hundreds every single day. No one has to ask me to do it. Doesn't feel like a chore. But I'll tell you why I do it. When I write down hundreds of things that I'm thankful for, and I have one problem that day, do you know how small that problem looks in comparison to my list of what great things are going on? It is literally you thanking God every day and not taking it for granted. Do you know how many women like put on cute outfits, do the dishes, cook clean, how many teachers burn out teaching, pastors pour their heart and soul into their congregations, and maybe once in a while you get a Christmas card? Yeah, that's tough. You don't want to be taken for granted. So think about how God feels. Every single, every single breath we take is something we should be thankful for. Every breath, not every, you know, check that comes in the mail that we needed, not every paycheck, not even every meal that we pray for, every single breath. And so if we at least start the day truly saying, wow, this is so awesome. Look at all the great things I have. No matter what, the problem will always be put into perspective. And so I really am going to pray for you guys. I am so excited for you guys to truly, truly experience this for yourselves. It's very liberating. It is great for your faith. It's very energizing to just be in such a good place with God even in the worst of times, because I believe that you can have it all. Faith, family, fitness, you know, and of course, faith. And so I hope that this blessed you tonight. Thank you so much, everyone at the Bloom Conference for having me. And I will pray for you all in your individual journeys. Thank you, guys. Hey, hey, Eileen. Wow, wow. I am still writing. <laughs> I think I have filled like three full pages of just notes. And I'm just like, wow, okay, I got to get everything. Um, this is definitely one of those videos we're going to have to go back and, and watch over and over again. So we make sure that there was nothing that got past us. But um, I just want to go through a couple of things that you said well, the first thing that blessed me was that um, when you said my bank account is a reflection of my past, I received that. I believe everybody in the chat and everyone <laughs> watching has received that. Um, may the Lord let my bank account be a reflection of my past and may it have the capacity to receive everything that the Lord will give me. It's, it's on its way, Rona or no Rona, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and then you said something about unconscious competence. I mean, how many of us go through life without, you know, building the capacity that we 
I suppose that God, you know, the God has already given us. We just skate through life without actually investing, you know, what we have been given by God so that the, the competence is no longer unconscious. It is conscious. Because imagine if we are doing so well when it's unconscious, how much more can we do when it's actually conscious? Okay. So, oh, okay. Okay. I, I'm, I'm receiving it, Eileen. I'm, I'm receiving it. And then you said community. We have to have strong people around. And we have to have a good support system. You say, don't hold back your gift because you have outgrown your friends. Okay. So make sure your friends are not holding you back. They are actually helping you grow your gifts. And then you said, you asked, do, you, do we have the capacity to handle what God is sending our way? Okay. I was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. So, and then contribution that we have to add value to others. We have to pour into others as God has poured into us. And then lastly, you said communication. Your regret was to not dreaming bigger sooner. And that just hit me, you know? I, I, I felt the Holy Spirit give me a jolt uh, on that one. Um, and then you said, don't, don't ask God. We have to communicate with God what we want. We can't blame him for not doing the things that he wants to do, you know? He wants to do. We haven't told him what we want. And then we say, <laughs> we, say we, don't, we don't understand that when he does not, when we don't get what, what we want. And you said, faith it till you make it. Faith it till you make it. And then you ended with the attitude of gratitude. And we are thankful in our problems and not thankful for our problems, but we can still bless the Lord in our, in our, in our problems. And then the last thing I want to say before I go to some of the, some of the, the, the comments from the, our, our listeners, you said, let God draw outside the lines. We like to confine God, you know, into what we think. And he's, you know, it says, the Bible says that he will give us increasingly, you know, abundantly more than we could ever ask or even imagine, meaning even the, our greatest imaginations are not even close to what he has in store for us. But um, but I, I just want to I just want to ask you, I just want to ask you something you said about communication. You said that one of your biggest uh, regrets was not dreaming bigger sooner. I don't know if you want to share something about that or how how is there is there something you want to talk to us a little bit more about that? Because that one really sounded like you you had a story in there. <laughs> oh man, I have a story for every day of the week on that one because <laughs> it, it, it happens every time. Once you see a prayer answered, I'm like, oh, I should have been thinking bigger. <laughs> this is so stressful. Um, I I saw it in I've seen it in a weight loss journey where oh I, just just a little bit, and uh, I saw it in finances where I was like. I literally just prayed to make rent. Why didn't I pray for a cute outfit? For more. Yeah, why didn't I pray for a trip? Why that that I took responsibility for what I was praying for. And uh, it's very freeing not to just sit there with your arms crossed blaming God, you know, like it, you give somebody a Christmas gift and they're just so ungrateful and you're just like that was literally your wish list. There and you go. That <laughs> That for me has has really been been life changing, and so I I try to just surround myself with people who are always doing better than me. I'm in the wrong room if I'm the smartest person in the room, because I've got to grow. And uh, yeah, dreaming bigger sooner. Um, yeah, that's that was a tough lesson, and I'm learning it every single day, every single day for sure. But. One thing in particular that comes to mind is, of course, I'll give you a money example. Um, my father passed away from lung cancer and I was fundraising for I'm the sorry lung about cancer. That. Yeah. Oh, thank you for the Lung Cancer Association. And I went to fundraise $200 and I fundraised them in like 
five minutes. I know, like, I didn't think that would happen, but I was like, oh, so I increased it by a little bit, hit my goal. I must have looked ridiculous. I literally just kept seeing the thing on the page for the American Lung Association until the day of while I was doing it, it we had to climb 38 floors in a high rise. And wow. while I was climbing, people were still donating. And I was like, if I would have thought bigger and I would have shown a bigger goal, people wouldn't have said, oh, she already hit her goal. People would have said, let me make a bigger contribution yeah. to help yeah. her. And that wasn't even money for me. That was for other people. So it's like us dreaming bigger really helps everyone around us. Wow, wow, wow. So basically, when we dream small, we are actually not just limiting ourselves, we're limiting even the people around us, because God wants to bless the people around us through us. Okay, guys, we, we got to dream bigger, so that it's not just about us. It's also about all the people that God wants to bless us, to bless them through us. Okay, okay. Somebody said, Tosha said, ask for the whole cake. Okay. Yes. She said, oh, she said, don't ask for just one piece of cake. Ask for the whole cake. Okay. Now, whew, somebody said they are full from this teaching. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Um, it said, write down how many things you are thankful for. Yes, yes. Make sure you get the homework right all of June. Make sure you write down how many things you are thankful for and see how meaningless one little problem will matter. Goodness, wow. Yes, Classy Christian says a rewatch is a must. <laughs> I, I invite everybody to make sure that they watch this again and again. Uh, God is a promise keeper, Naomi says. Uh, trust him, trust him. And... Uh, Somebody said this message was loaded. Definitely have to go back and listen again. And um, yes, I am. I am. I am right there with the, with all of you guys. Yes, we have to definitely watch this again. Somebody said Shay Hines says, "Don't wait till the battle is over. Shout now, okay? Um, come on, baby girl, speak it. Don't wait. Don't wait. Come on, girl." Says Young Tate. Sugar Bear says, "Make the move. Don't wait." So we are getting inspired. Pastor Lola, come on, come on. What, what, what blessed you? What, what did the spirit roll by your, <laughs> your driveway? <laughs> well, um, I, I just want to say thank you to Eileen. Um, you all heard her credentials. She contributes to Forbes magazine. She's an entrepreneur. She has trained hundreds of thousands of people and was willing to share here. And as we saw in the comments, it was not just business principles. She gave a word in season um, for lots of us. And Eileen, I just want you to just speak to somebody who's feeling like maybe you're just a naturally positive person and you didn't have to do any mindset shifting or anything like that. Um, you talked to us about being grateful and writing down um, points of gratitude, but can you tell us a little bit about any mind shifting that you had to do in order to actually believe that you deserve the whole cake? Oh my goodness. Let me tell you, I'm, I'm working now to tell, to learn. I can, I learned the bakery, not just the cake. That's oh, yeah. you gotta learn <laughs> you <for> yourself. <laughs> but what, what you see here is, is definitely not something you're, you're born with. You, you have to develop it because it's like our, our sinful nature has tried to cloud what rightfully belongs to us and how we should believe and act. So just like I wouldn't look at somebody with a six pack and say, oh, they just woke up like that. Like you see that pro person probably watches what they eat. They work out. Let me tell you, this took some work. I read a book a week, a uh, Bible daily. If I'm having a tough day, it is not, you can ask my husband, it is not uncommon for me to listen to five to 10 sermons because I'm so committed to shaking it off. And I don't oh, wow. know 
what I don't know. And that's why I listen to so many sermons or podcasts or whatever, because I don't know what song or message is what's going to serve me in that moment. So until I get what I need, I will keep pouring into that cup. Just like if you had a pool, mm. you wouldn't throw a bottle of water. That pool has a certain capacity. So they're going to put thousands of gallons of water into it. So as your capacity grows, you need to learn to dig your well before you're thirsty. Mm. Oh my goodness. Dig for a Bible wow. verse when I'm unraveling. That's, that's when you need a tissue. You don't need some meme with a motivational quote. You need to come ready and not say, oh, now I need to go somewhere and suddenly four of your tires are slashed. You don't have the resources to get to your destination. And so what you see here is commitment and work and prayer and like taking a shower. You would never say, oh, I've been showering all year. That's I'm done with this. Right. You're going to shower every day. So, like I don't ever want to hear. I already read that book the Bible. I've heard it a million times. I grew up in the church. Like, listen, I don't care what you heard. I want to know what you applied. Mm -hmm. so apply and, oh, no. and build your own muscles. Like, you know, my muscles can only help you so much. You got to pick up your own stuff and mm -hmm. make your own muscles for that. So of course, ride my belief if you need to, to conjure the strength to want to go build those muscles. But what you're not seeing is tears, mascara running down to my knees, bruises on my knees for praying, massive amounts of sacrifices, endless risks mm. so that I could give God a chance to show up, not gambling, calculated risks, <laughs> um, endless ability to be open minded. So I I'm not talking at anyone. I am just being honest and real with you because we just see a cookie cutter situation on social media and the truth is, is everybody's going through something. Mm -hmm. Everyone has 24 hours in a day, even Oprah, even Mark Cuban. So I don't want to hear, I don't have time. I don't have energy. I promise you, you have everything in you that you need to succeed no matter the scenario, because God is in you. Amen. 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 Oof. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we when I tell you we're all walking around here full, we thank you. And I wanted to take a moment to pray uh, for that person mm -hmm. who is looking at their muscles and wondering if any strength can be applied, if there's any hope. Philippians 4.13 does say, I can do all things all through things. Christ who gives me yeah. strength. And so today, if you are listening, if you are hearing this, then mm -hmm. this is God telling you that you can, if you will. You can, mm -hmm. if you will. If you, you have will. to make a decision Amen. to do it. Come on, let's pray together. Mm -hmm. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you so much for your servant, Eileen Harris, who has come to us tonight. And what a wonderful word we've heard tonight. We can do all things through you who gives us strength. We think about the four C's that she gave to us, community, capacity, contribution, and communication. And they all require a determination in our minds and applied effort to move. And I'm praying even now for the person who feels like they don't have it in them to try again, for the person who has been disappointed in the past, for the individual looking at their bank account and not believing that mm -hmm. it's a reflection of the past, but it's just a reflection of who they are and what they always will be. And we rebuke the enemy who is speaking to them in the name of Jesus. We mute him now. Yeah. And we ask in the name of Jesus that your word would now begin to inform mm. their effort moving forward. You said, do not become weary and well-doing for in due season, you will reap if you faint not. You have told us, mm. God, to continue to move with you, that those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They'll mount up on wings like eagles. They'll run and not grow weary. They'll walk and not faint. And most of us shout on this stuff when we go to church, we wave our hands, we move around and we leave 
as deflated and dejected as we came. And God, we rebuke the momentary high in the name of Jesus. We rebuke the shot in the arm and we're asking for sustained effort in the name of Jesus applied to everyone who is watching this video that we will commit every day to doing something that builds our mental and emotional muscles. We ask that you would reveal to us what our unconscious competence is, God, the things that we do without thinking about them, the things that people compliment us on, the things that we have been taught to despise because they came to us easily. God, we claim them now and we ask that you would empower us, oh God, restore the years that the locusts have stolen or what the canker worm has eaten, oh God, with the stripping locusts and all of those devouring locusts have taken. We ask that you would replenish, oh God, us in the name of Jesus for what Eileen has poured out to us tonight. We ask that you would pour it back into her, into her family, into her business, pressed down, shaken together and running over. We thank you for a picture of what life would be like if we just believed you more if we just looked at you and believed everything that you said. And so now may we take this image and apply it to our life is our prayer in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. I want to say thank you so much for joining me again. And I want to see in the comments how you're going to believe God bigger. Won't you join me for the next 30 days in waking up and as a part of our devotional practice, we are going to jot down at least five things that we are grateful for every day for the rest of this month. Five things that you're grateful for, man. I'm going to start tonight. After we get off of this podcast or after, after we get off of this broadcast, I'm going to start tonight because I am ready to claim like Eileen said, listen, not only the bakery, I want the flour factory. I want the egg. I want the farm with the eggs. I want the sugar cane field. I want it all. And man, how much have we lost because we have not believed God earlier. If you'd like to connect with Eileen Harris, you can connect with her at EileenHarris.com and get some more of that good wisdom. Wasn't that good, y'all? Man, just amazing. Before we leave, I do want to share with you again that we have scholarships to our upcoming Bloom Everywhere 14-Day Purpose Project. I want to help you on your journey. And so from June 14th to 27th, if you're interested, go to bloomwithlola.com. If you're interested in a scholarship. I've already started to receive your messages. Won't you inbox me and go live on our Bloom Movement um, page and share why it is that you want to um, have a scholarship and what the Bloom Everywhere Conference has done for you. Until then, I want to make sure that if you're watching on YouTube that you subscribe to the Bloom Movement page. If you're on the Bloom Movement page on Facebook, subscribe, like, share, Make sure you tell somebody else what you heard tonight and we pray that you'll be abundantly blessed. We're coming back tomorrow evening with Miss Claudia Allen, who's going to teach us how to find our voice. And especially in this climate, she who is, um, man, a clarion voice for social justice and causes uh, of alleviating systemic oppression. We are grateful to hear from her on tomorrow. So make sure that you're back here, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 Pacific for Bloom Everywhere, a virtual transformation conference. God bless you.